What if we could do this with a number that neither of us could possibly know? Go to page 43. Uh, yeah. 17 lines down. 16, Nine across. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No! 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 no. <laughs> Pi is an infinitely long non-recurring number. In theory, every possible string of numbers is in there somewhere, including pin numbers, passwords, dates, and random times of the day. By revelations enables you to pick the exact location of 10,000 possible freely selected numbers in a dictionary test style reveal within the first 50,000 decimals of pi. The most fascinating number in mathematics now holds the key to unlock your spectator's mind. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the number pi. Pi is a three, followed by a point, followed by an unlimited string of numbers. And what that means is that any combination of numbers you can think of will appear somewhere in pi. Now, believe it or not, somebody wrote a book which is pi documented to 50,000 decimal places. We couldn't believe it when we found this. It's just numbers. That's an easy wow. read. It's an easy read, absolutely. <laughs> now, using this book, we're going to show you something Marina can do called cognitive intuition. And it's incredible. I don't quite understand how it works. And then press plus. Uh -huh. Pin code that you used to use, or some kind of four digit number that stands out in your head. Equals. Yeah. Do you have a number there, Marina? Go to the page 52. Uh -huh. All right. Okay, you're on the page 52. Now count six lines down. Yeah. And from there, I three digits. See it. <laughs> I already no. see it. No, no. Yeah, is that the number? Yeah. Marina, get the f out of here. <laughs> Are you the Martian? <laughs> I can see it. How the f did you do that? <laughs> Guys, it's, it's impossible. This gets even better. That was a randomly generated number. But what if we could do the same thing with a number that neither of us could possibly know? In this case, I want you to think of your uh, pin number. Okay. Page 43. All right, will you tell me the line? Line 17. Line 17. Now, the number across? Ninth digit. Ninth digit. Page 43, line 17, ninth digit. Wait, for the first time, what is the four digit number you're thinking of? Three, zero, yep. one, zero. Okay, go to page 43. Uh, now I need to Anxiety. change my <laughs> My heart is racing right now. Yeah. 17 lines down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. Nine across. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. <laughs> no, no, no! Guys, this is really freaky. Yes? This is oh, really God. freaky. <laughs> Honestly. No way! <laughs> Two, four, eight, oh, six. My oh my God! <laughs> you have connected <laughs> with Jonathan in a way we never would have expected. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you to Pi. And thank you to David Penn for creating this <laughs> and sharing it with us and being here to talk all about it. What's shaking, my friend? Good to see you out there. Good to see you. Thank you for having me, Luke. All right. So uh, a lot of buzz, a lot of talk, um, and we are very excited. There's been questions already popping up about this. Um, but first, let's talk about what this is and isn't. What is the Pi Revelations and, and what isn't? this because i know that was one of the things we definitely wanted to cover along the way too yeah sure so uh, i will tell you what pi revelations is which is my new re release it's very exciting that it's coming out today with murphy's magic dealers worldwide uh, a couple of questions have come up which 
obviously it's great to come on with you today, Luke, and have the opportunity to answer those. And the, the number one question is about apps, which we're going to get to shortly. But number two, people have said, how is it different from things that have been out before? Uh, namely releases by Sean uh, Taylor from Australia, Richard Padden from Australia and Vincent Hayden that have all had book tests out before and uh, Vincent Hayden has got a fantastic uh, book test which is Pi related, it's a Pi book test and what Vincent's book test enables you to do is recite Pi which is an unbelievable effect. So you can say to somebody, open up the book, the first three quarters of the book and recite a few numbers. And then you are able to carry on and recite pi. So you go, there's a five and then there's a six and then there's a seven and you can recite pi. And then there's a kicker where you can find somebody's birthday in pi. You cannot do any of that with pi revelations, my book test. And if you want to recite pi, Vincent Hayden's version is the way to go with this. What Pi Revelations does, it allows you to covertly peek the location of a four digit code. And it is any four digit code, unlimited, from 0000, zero, zero, zero all the way up to 9999. Nine, nine, nine. During the course of your routine, and it's very carefully choreographed in a routine which is taught on the trailer, but the tutorial by Michael Murray, and it's from his book, A Piece of My Mind. And that enables you to peek the spectator's PIN number on their phone at the same time as being able to access and harvest that information, you're able to uh, know where that PIN number is in the Pi Revelations book. And it really is an incredible effect. You don't need any apps or anything like that. And the fact that Michael Murray's been so generous in letting me teach that on my tutorial just means that you don't need to buy any paid apps or anything. You are able to perform this incredible effect and find their four digit code within the 50,000 decimals of pi. Wow, uh, that's pretty crazy. If you think about all the numbers, all the digits, all the different possibilities. And someone actually had a question. Um, Braden asked, is it actually the first 50,000 decimal places? Is, is that true? <laughs> Close enough. Can we talk on? Can we talk honestly here? Uh, so it's a really great question. It's such an intelligent question. So obviously there's four digits in a four digit passcode. And there's uh basically there's forty there'd be forty thousand digits if you had all the possible passcodes. And there is, but I think it's uh, more deceptive to call it 50,000 decimals <laughs> of pi, even though it's not quite 100% honest. Are we, are we okay to lie a bit? In Dude, we're magicians. We lie. We're I know, <laughs> but it's a really great question because it was something I considered. It's actually over four, just over 40,000 is what's there. Okay. Okay. But I decided to call it 50,000 digits as part of the deception. Cool. Uh, and, and I love the little the little name you have on the bottom there, Professor David <laughs> Neep. <laughs> That's too funny, dude. I wonder who that is. There he is. <laughs> there he is. There's his picture. <laughs> I don't know funny. who that guy is. Some some stock photo or something. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's it's a really good question about the number in there. It's it, it's all about the deception. Obviously, it's sure. not a real pie book. It is a very cleverly gaffed book uh the first bit if if they know and uh, going back to uh, i forgot whose question it was apologies my friend but uh, if if you've got a spectator that wants to count all those digits after the <laughs> performance uh then you've got big problems and i think you need to focus on your performance a little bit more so i think you're pretty safe saying fifty thousand digits and just going with that but uh yeah um and you've had quite a few uh, huge quotes. Peter Turner is showing a lot of love for this, which is great. He's one of the best of the best in the field of minimalism, obviously. And um, I like that his his quote goes along the um, uh, Rain Man, you know, talking about showing that you have the abilities of the Rain Man and, and beyond. 
I mean, this really does give you the um, the chance to show people that you can have these incredible memory powers or this incredible, you know, just the memory alone is, is an impressive feat, even though you don't really have it. And the best part is this version, you don't have to do any of the memory work that you were mentioning some of the other versions that are out there, which is great. You can truly focus yeah. on the presentation and the performance with this one, which is fantastic. So it It is literally a peak, Luke. You yeah. are peaking the location and during the choreography of the routine you are able to harvest that information nice. directly from your spectators because of michael murray's routine which is explained on the tutorial it does mean that you can get that information from them and literally as they're looking in the book it takes seconds to peak where their pin code is in the book cool. it's it's just it's actually it's criminal how easy it is to perform, <laughs> but the reactions are incredible. And the reason I created this is I have revealed pin numbers in my stage show before. And it's always a little bit difficult because it seems kind of disingenuous to the spectator to reveal their pin number, because mm -hmm. this could be the pin number to their, their credit card or something like that, chip and pin. So perhaps you don't want to say it out loud, but what you can do at the time they think you're guessing the pin number, you can put down the page as James is doing there in the video. You can put down the page, the line and the characters across. And when they go to the book, you actually get this really amazing reaction because they see their personal number. They see the pin number in print. And there's a certain amount of permanence to that. And it's a really interesting reaction for a spectator when it's only a thought of pin number. We chose to reveal it in the trailer and James actually asks for the number. So it kind of shortens the trailer a little bit so everybody could see the complete effect. But my own preference is to not ask them to send them to the space. And then when they go, they see it in print, their own pin number. And they've never told you the pin number. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds too good to be true, but it's not. It is not. <laughs> um, and keep in mind, guys, I know that in some of the videos uh, you might have seen or some of the um, the ad details, uh, that this does work perfectly with some apps as well. And we have a special guest popping up here in just a minute that we're going to talk to about that stuff too. But I really, I'm glad that we started this out by letting people know that you do not have to buy an additional thing if you don't want to. This does work as is. Um, however, the possibilities, the door is blown wide open when you tag team this with something like Inject, who may or may not be here very soon, Mr. Greg Rostami. So why don't you talk about that, the combination of going from the basic principle to that, and then we'll jump into some of the app talk too. So this is going to sound like a kind of like a juxtaposition from what I said before. I'm going to seem to go against what I said before, because you actually don't need apps. But the book does work with an API code, which is used by most app developers. And that API code is open source. And it's just very lucky for me that I've got so many friends in the app community because of the way I earn my living now is kind of like a tech magician. I speak to these guys all the time. And there are so many amazing app creators out there that have already adopted my API code, which is open source. And anybody can use it once they've purchased the book. But this enables them to build my code within their app. And Greg is going to give you a perfect example of that in a moment with things like The Stranger with Jonathan Levitt. He's already done performances online where he's calling a stranger and then the stranger on the other end of the phone's telling a spectator where their pin number is in the book, which is just unbelievable. It's mind blowing. With Calculon, you can use a spectator's phone and peak the location of the uh, the position in the book of the pin number or the secret information inject we're going to come to let me talk very briefly about the architect of predictions the architect of predictions would enable you to harvest the spectator's pin number then open up your camera roll look at a photo from days ago look days ago where you're in a different location holding a sign and the sign says go to uh, it just looks like you've written it in pen and it just says go to this page, go to this line, go so many across. 
and it looks like you took that photo so many days ago and then when they go to that position they'll find their pin number in print or you can have the spectator uh, give you uh, a page they could choose a line and they could choose the characters across they could make those decisions <laughs> and when they go to the camera roll they then find on the camera roll a four digit code you holding the sign and then when they go to the page the line and the characters across that they chose they'll find exactly the same number there's so many app developers that are, it's just getting bigger this thing all the time there are people working on it there are people implementing this code this is kind of like an exclusive coming up now for people that have already got inject from murphy's magic dealers and already they they could test this now in actual fact what i saw a video that greg did it's with two spectators borrowed phones remember he's not even got his phone out he just got the book out two spectators borrowed phones and it is incredible what greg has implemented and he did this this is nothing to do with me this is me saying hey i've got this code guys i've got this api code what do you want to do with it? And somebody with a mind like Greg's just creates something that is incredible. And it's not even an extra cost for anybody that's got Inject. And uh, if you haven't got Inject, you need to get it because it's one of the best magic apps out there. But I know Greg is going to talk about it. I don't want to steal his thunder, but it's an amazing thing Greg's come up with. And if you've already got Inject, you could test it now. You don't even need to have pirate revelations to try it right now nice well i think we've we've said his name enough times he's kind of like beetlejuice if you say you know the name enough times he just, <laughs> just pops up so i think we should do that i'll say it one more time greg ristami ta-da how are we Hi. doing sir <laughs> hello oh man looking good over there good to see you man good to see you too luke good to see you david Good to see you and thank you for everything you've been working on because the app developers, they don't need to do this. This is, they just get excited about their apps. And if there's, if there's something that can just make their app half a percent better, people that are truly dedicated like Greg will just do it every single time. Yeah, absolutely. David, thank you so much for allowing us to do this and uh, for partnering up with me in, having this integration with Inject, it's really exciting and I've been performing it and it gets amazing reactions, um, mainly because of what you said about how it's something that is completely solid. You know, we have information that is locked into Pi that is being revealed. Um, so the, the video that everybody's watching right now is my impromptu performance um, and it's available on YouTube. You guys can watch it in its entirety with audio. But essentially the way that I perform this right now is I, if I am in a group like this performance here, uh, I oftentimes actually ask like four people for different digits. So I present it like a, a happy coincidence. And I say that even though we came up with just four completely random digits that that number is someplace in Pi. And I'm willing to bet you that that number is within the first 50,000 digits of Pi. And then um, what makes the integration with Inject exciting for me is that I have predicted exactly where that number is in the Pi book, even before the spectators have made up their four digits. And so this is something that I really emphasize and I highlight to uh, the spectators so that they know that I made pred my prediction on their phone in Google way before we ever came up with these random set of digits. And so this can be presented either with an accomplice helping you, it can be presented without an accomplice, which is what you see in the video, as David said, uh, of me just simply performing with two borrowed phones. Uh, my phone is actually being used by my wife during this performance for the actual videoing. So <laughs> I do not have a phone. I do not have a smartwatch. But the inject integration does allow this kind of an impromptu performance as long as you got your Pi Revelations book with you. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And David, what do you want to say about this? I mean, seeing Greg use this with inject is 
just a beautiful thing, man. What a beautiful combination here. There's just, you know, I've been such a fan of Greg's for years and especially his, his app, but Greg as a performer, as a human being, you know, he's such a great guy. And I, it, it really meant a lot to me when he sent me the video through and he said, you know, look what I've come up with. And just as, as a creator of magic to come up with an idea and have somebody like Greg add it to his app and then create like a unique routine. It really does genuinely mean so much to you. And just the impossibility of this, that a spectator's phone, you say you're going to make a prediction on it and you leave that phone with the spectator who owns that phone. And then somebody else is Googling just a four digit number with a question mark at the end immediately after. And then because of the genius that is working in the background with inject to make you look good combined with Pi revelations everything is just going to happen for you simultaneously so much so that at the time this person googles this random four digit number with a question mark immediately at the end when the spectator looks back on the phone where you made the prediction on their phone that prediction is going to be 30 hyphen five hyphen 11, which is the position of the spectators randomly generated number in the Pi Revelations book. It's, mm -hmm. it's just mind blowing. And the fact that the API code is open source, it just makes me realize even more Luke that probably the best effect with Pi Revelations is still yet to be created <laughs> because so many people like I've put as much into it as I can with all the stuff from Michael Murray on the on the tutorial. Uh, I've I've given as much as I can, but I can't help thinking when I get videos through from the likes of Greg and Jonathan Levitt, and they say, "Well, look what I've been doing with it." You're just going, "Wow, this thing's just going to take off for somebody." Yes, yes, yeah. and. Yeah. And it's nice to see this too. Uh, I know Jonathan's clip, he was performing for a virtual audience, which I know a lot of people still are. So it's a nice reminder too, that uh, if you would like to do this in a virtual environment, it works great for that too. So it's worth mentioning. Um, hopefully we're on the last few legs of that. I know Greg, you're over all this stuff. You're ready to get back to <laughs> conventions and real life. And hopefully that's the direction that all we're right, going. But so. in the meantime, you know, if you are still doing virtual shows, guys, you can definitely use this there too. So that's uh, something I wanted to. To, to mention yeah. Well. So, yeah. Um, one other thing I wanted to add about how brilliant this is, is that, you know, as, as magic technology developers or as app developers, you know, there is always a strive to have uh, an analog section of a performance, which is really important. I mean, you don't want everything to be on the digital side. And David's book, the, the Pi Revelations book, um, allows that to be there. I mean, there is that real nature of the reveal at the end is important. Um, and then the entire premise of Pi in general is fascinating. So the emotional hook and the intrigue of the number of Pi, to people that know about it, it's intriguing. And for the people that don't know about it, it's intriguing. Um, and when you come up with a, a magical effect with something that is oftentimes called the ghost in mathematics, which really is what Pi is, it's a non-converging number, <laughs> you know, a number that really isn't a number. You can't lock it down because it never stops. Um, it's ever going, ever going. So all of that combined together uh, makes uh, a very powerful performance. And then finally, the uh, emotion of it being something that's relevant to the spectator, you know. So that's the, those are my feelings about it. I'm really excited about it, and I, I think that what David said about this is just the beginning of how people are going to use this is really valid. Yes. Uh, and also, I've seen a couple questions too. I want to make a quick note. Uh, questions about uh, availability and pricing. This is fifty-five dollars. Uh, the book is, and it is available now on a pre-sale um, until the thirtieth, I believe. I think that's the official release. It's only, fr it's only Friday. The dealers are going to be sending them out on Friday all over the world. That's what's going on. Yeah. So if you guys are digging on this, hit up your favorite magic shop right now. This is officially launched and on magic shops websites uh, and in their shops all over the world. So I know the pre-sales have already started to fly off the shelves. So I don't know how much longer these are going to last. So uh, hopefully we'll have some more 
uh, on back order. But yeah, these have been flying off the shelves and for good reason. You know, when you've got people like David Penn teaming up and uh, giving you a chance to use things like Inject with his release, I mean, the magic that you can do with either one of these separately is great. You put them together and it's like totally impossible stuff, which I've seen people mention a few times. Just impossible is the word over and over again. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Danny actually had an interesting question for you, David. Um, I know this just came yeah. out. <laughs> uh, Danny Marco, my friend, uh, wanted to know in Spain, uh, I know it just got released, but any chance maybe of a pocket-sized version maybe down the line? That's a, that's an interesting question. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really good question, actually. Uh, I think, uh, Danny, it would be disingenuous of me to produce something for the magic community if I didn't want to use it myself. So the reason Pi Revelations is out is because I want to use it in my own shows because I do a lot of magic with pin numbers and tech and I do a whole act as a tech magician and every trick involves a mobile phone. So the reason at the moment that it's A5 size, um, that's really just for the production value in a show so people can see it and it's a little bit bigger, but it probably is something I need to look at long term. This has been a huge investment on not only the tech side, but obviously the production side of it. Products like this d don't come cheaply, especially the work and the R&D that went into it. And not only the, the R&D to produce it, but the R&D to test it as well. So it's not going to let you down ever. So if I'm going to have to produce a smaller version that will mean maybe the pages will have to shift and the content will need to shift on the pages so i'd need to start all over again uh but i'm i'm not saying no never say never right and if enough people hit me up at conventions or i see you out at the sam convention we're going to be there soon luke um if people say do you know what i'm loving it but i'd really like a pocket version maybe that would be something i'd look at down the line all right Good to know. Good to know. Um, I missed that last comment. Did somebody say Calculon? That I saw that comment. Uh, his the question was uh, actually he's where I so, wish I was. Mark Schaefer says, "Can't wait to buy this." Uh, I'm listening oh. from the beach in Cabo. Rub it in, <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be ordering this right now today. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah, I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to go five miles from my house right now. Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> oh. It, Daryl had another good comment, you know, when you're talking about performing this um, in uh, interesting situations, this would be a good one. Imagine sending the book to the CEO of a company a week before a live presentation. So that's pretty rad too. That's a good idea. You could have the book sent to them and have them do the revelation in their own hands. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Very good. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's there, there are so many possibilities with it. It looks so disarming. And pi is a magical number. And from a patter and presentational point of view, uh, Greg kind of alluded to this, not just amongst mathematicians, it's a very magical number. When you consider that it, it is rumored, I wasn't around at the time, so uh, I can't confirm it, but it's rumored that the architects considered pi when they built the pyramids of Giza. So when you consider information like this, it is absolutely fascinating. It is the most fascinating number in mathematics. It's completely non-recurring and it goes on forever. And I just love that theory that every possible number is in there somewhere, as James says on the trailer. And the fact that you can open up your routine with all these presentational hooks you've got a visual hook you've got a prop which adds production value to what you're talking about i.e pi and then at the end of the routine they go straight to it and they find their pin number and everything that you spoke about at the start you're kind of like top and tailing your performance you've started with your hook and then you just kick them in the teeth with their revelation at the end when they find their pin number in pi it's there's something it's it's a better reaction than you writing it down the spectator going looking for it and any experienced magician knows if you can have a routine where you're they they almost guess what the end result's going to be right and they're going no as they're on the way to the finale they're going no 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 
like like the guy who's in view right now on the uh, uh, trailer, he he's looking for his pin number. And as he's, he's he actually says, I'm getting tense. He's, he uses some words like trepidation. I'm getting tense as he's looking for it. And you don't get that kind of reaction just from writing it down and turning it around and going, ta-da. You send them looking for it, and they know that at the end of it, their PIN number may be there. That does something to a spectator's mind from a presentational point of view. And I believe it magnifies the intensity of the reaction because they already have an idea what might be happening and what might be the end result, but they know that it's impossible. But they're going on this journey and they're almost frightened of the end result. And that's why the reactions are just incredible. And that's why every single time James and Marina filmed it, people swore. They can't believe it. Um, I had a question about a specific, and I know we were talking about the specifics of the 50,000, you know, decimal places, but this is an interesting question because some people may actually know the first few digits of pi, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. Um, Charles wanted to know, are the first few numbers correct? Many people know it's 3.1. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Just wanted to make sure we were. So I can, uh, yeah. So the first, the, the first, there we go. There's, you can check out the top line there. Cool. 3.14. Yeah. There we go. So it, it is, if, if they look at that first page, no problem at all. Okay. Um, cool. If, if they, if they want to go beyond that while you're doing your act, I'd say get out of magic or start working <laughs> on your presentation <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, if they find the book more interesting than you, yeah, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true. Um, and guys, if you have any last questions, I'm trying to get to as many as I can. I know they're, they're kind of flying by my screen here, but if you have any last questions uh, for David or for Greg or the two of them, uh, go ahead and drop them in. That's why we do these things live. But we're definitely doing our best to cover everything as quick as we can. I know that I told the guys about 30, 45 minutes. We've definitely gone over the 30-minute mark now, so we're getting towards the end of this chat. Um, but definitely want to make sure you guys uh, get as much info um, as, as you needed on this one. Because I know um, a lot of questions about this one. Um, I like Michael Murray's quote, by There's the way, David. Um David's uh, <laughs> it's a little Michael bit Murray, uh, how do you how do you make a pin revelation even more powerful the easy the answer is as easy as pi yeah, uh, yeah. I like that one a lot it is. yeah it's also a who's who is a powerhouse oh, sorry go ahead Michael is a powerhouse in the magic community his book a piece of my mind uh, which came out in 2014 not many creators when you go to them would be so generous as Michael to say, just, just use it, just give it away to your uh, viewers that are watching your tutorial and give it with my blessing. And somebody like Michael, you know, there's some really good guys in the magic community and they're so supportive of new ideas. And he, he really was so generous to allow me to explain that. And it's, it's brilliant and it just means that you don't need any apps. You can just use a spectator's phone and harvest their PIN number. They'll have no idea. And then you're already on the road to revealing it in Pi Revelations later on. But that's all I, you know, I can't say enough about Michael. He is a genius. But the fact that he's such a generous genius means so much. Um, and there was another comment too. Uh, I know that we're talking to Greg, obviously with uh, Inject, um, but also on the list, I did see another one and uh, he is watching as well. Joshua Riley wanted to mention too that it's also supported with his app, UPS. So I wanted to mention that one as well. So. Yes, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, Joshua's done a great job with his implementation. So this is definitely- he fri jo Joshua frightens me because I, I had a meet I ha does he frighten you've obviously met him online and he's yeah. this like young he, th this guy is going to be a billionaire before he's 35 do you know what i mean when i say that <laughs> absolutely um, yeah absolutely. he's like he he looks like a 14 year old kid when you see him when you meet him and he he is older than that so <laughs> don't take that too badly it's actually a compliment uh, for you, joshua but he is literally a genius this guy and 
it, it, I, it, I'm just so proud of him, the, the level of work that he puts into his own products and his apps. And when I started speaking to him about the integration of Pi Revelations, much the same as Greg, this really young man is, is going, yeah, let's do this and I can do this and I can create this with it. And two days later, he just comes back with something that is absolutely mind blowing. And, it, it, you know, if he was working on Bitcoin instead of magic tricks, this guy would be a billionaire. <laughs> but we're, we're lucky to have him in the magic community. And uh, all UPS stuff is all explained in the tutorial. He is a genius. So thank you, Joshua. Cool. And it's really refreshing, isn't it, to see someone come out with something and people within the industry kind of working together on it instead of complaining and bitching and like pointing fingers like, no, this is mine. This is mine. No, you can't have this. Can't. Like everyone's just so helpful. And like, what a breath of fresh air. I wish we could see a lot more of that in the magic world, you know, because. Yeah, there'll, it, there'll always be plots will always evolve. There'll always be people that do different things like, you know, the cube matching. I think Ali Bongo invented the cube matching for Paul Daniels years ago. And then somebody else comes out with their take on it. And then Henry Harrius comes out with his take. And so many people have different ways to contribute to the plot. And I didn't want to do anything that had been done before and step on anybody else's toes. But the thing that really excited me was the fact that you could peak the location and the spectators had no idea that you even knew the number let alone knew where it was in the Pi Revelations book. Uh, you, you're so many steps ahead, it's unreal. And it's because of people like Greg that have layered that with so much deception. It's, it's unbelievable now what is actually possible. And it's always amazing to see Greg Rustami performing, which is why I'm glad we had that clip earlier. And if you guys do <laughs> want to watch the clip, and that's why I'm mentioning it, if you do want to watch the clip of him actually doing it with audio, I think Greg did mention it's on your YouTube channel. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's on, it's on my YouTube channel. You guys are welcome to watch that performance. Absolutely. Cool. Because I know yeah. a lot of people, they, they they like to watch trailers, but they love to watch live performances of, of things being done. So if you guys want to see that, not only is there some great footage on the trailer for Pi Revelations, but also Greg does a full performance of it from start to finish to really give you an idea of what this is if you're still a little unsure about all the details. So I wanted to throw that out there for you guys too. And I'll, I'll be sure to link that on some of our socials so you guys can can uh, can check that out as well. So yeah. Um, as we start to wind down and wrap this up, any last thoughts about this? Anything you want to make sure people know about that we haven't covered or just any little details that you think that you might want to highlight one more time, David, just because this is such a an abstract and different kind of thing, but such a fooling thing at the same time. So. I think the main thing is just to underline the fact that although apps are amazing and can certainly take Pi Revelations to the next level, you don't necessarily need to use apps. But if you've got something like Inject 2.0 in your arsenal, it's only going to supercharge your performance. But Pi Revelations will give you a very strange reaction from a spectator and it will be a reaction that builds and it will build because they cannot believe what they are about to see and they almost guess the ending before they see it and when they see their own pin number in print in a view that's uh, in a book that's been in view from the start that just does something really weird to a spectator's mind and the fact that you can do that without ever knowing the number it's it's crazy i, I still don't know quite how i thought of it but i'd be taking a little bit too much credit from the people that helped me so much, like Mike Phillips and Bud Shah Khan, that actually did all the programming work in the background to make the book work. And the work they did on it was incredible. I just had this mad idea how to reveal a spectator's pin number without even looking at it and without being told the number. And you're getting one more look here, guys, of the book. You can see it there. And a little peek. and nobody is looking at that book right now. Let's face it. That's that's Marina. That's Marina <laughs> from Mind to Mind. And uh, Marina and James, they must be the hottest couple in magic. They're like she, Marina is actually a, a supermodel in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. And James does modeling as well. And they do magic. It's so unfair. 
These people are going to have children one day, and these children are going to walk the earth and make us all feel inferior. It's, <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> oh, oh, too funny. Well, uh, Greg, thanks Luke, for popping There up. is one other thing oh, go ahead. I, I wanted to say um, is that one of the most exciting things for me, and I'm sure for David, is um, the, the future prospects of this. And we made sure that the way that Pi Revelations works with Inject works across the entire Inject ecosystem. So you can use the covert ways of inputting information in Inject mm -hmm. with Pi Revelations. Um, and so the, then same applies for the output of information, you know, so all the different various ways that you can get information and inject, you know, from a uh, hidden earpiece to a uh, watch reveal to all these other things are all simply built in, you know, just having inject allows you to take the Pi Revelations reveal uh, always with you. It's just, it's just available in that ecosystem. Nice. Well, yeah, it's uh, amazing. Thanks. The covert type, the covert typing would be a whole other chat, wouldn't it, Greg? <laughs> but it is yeah. In incredible. Yeah. Uh, can oh, we? Yeah, can yeah, I just yeah, say yeah, before I go? Yeah, please. Be yeah. Be before I go, I just want to say, look, I'm missing so many of my American friends. We're missing Magic Live uh, this year. Uh, I just want to say I'm missing you guys, uh, but I am going to be out at the SAM convention. Uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, at the start of in Las Vegas at the start of next year. So if you're going to that convention, I really look forward to having a drink with you guys over there. And Luke, I'm looking forward to your show and seeing people like Alan Rorison. Yes. Coming uh, over from your side of, of mine. And Ava Yap coming in from Singapore. Oh, it's going to be rad, man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be good. I'm sure you've got another space on the bill, but I don't know who that could be. <laughs> We should talk. We should talk. Yes. <laughs> we should talk. Oh, yes. Uh, and also, uh, as Jacob says, too, I want to mention this, too. Uh, he says he enjoys all of your releases. Uh, as a mathematician, though, this one is a must-have for him. Um, and that is something that should be said, too, before we go, is that um, David Penn's name, synonymous within the magic industry. So if you want to check out more of his work, I know that Murphy's Magic stocks quite a bit of it. Uh, and you guys can definitely... Um, Make your magic better by checking out some of his work. It's very smart. It's very clever. And a lot of times, even at the last Blackpool, a lot of this stuff was just selling out like crazy. So uh, if, you, if you've never know. heard of the 52 to 1 deck, well, add that to your basket as well, because that's just, um, I think it's the best thing that I've ever come up with. Although it was just an extra bit of thinking to my buddy uh, Wayne Fox's idea. But top TV magicians have performed that all over the world, like Dynamo. And Wayne already had this incredible effect. But what I did was just make a gaff deck version of it that made it so clean, it, it makes it unbelievable. So after you've checked out Pi Revelations, if you've been living under a rock and you haven't picked up the 52 to 1 deck from your favorite magic dealer, at least watch the trailer. Yes, it is great, guys. You literally spread a deck. Think of a card, and you can reveal the card. It's stupid good. It's really, really you, good. You, you cut to the card. This isn't a lie. You cut to the card the spectator is thinking of, and they never tell you the card. They never tell you the card, but you cut to it. And then the spectator can cut to their own thought of card. It's, it's a crazy effect. It is the mad genius of Wayne Fox. I only added 10%. But my God, it's a good 10%. <laughs> and I remember you fooled me with it at Magic Live one year. So you got me good. I did. So, um, I did. Cool. Yeah, you got me good. Uh, who, we, you were with somebody else at the time. I can't remember. Uh, and the, the mentalism guy. And both of you admitted you had no idea. Yeah, I had no clue. Yeah, no clue at all. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love to be fooled. As you guys know, as we as we get older and we and we become more educated with the you know magic that we learn and the, the principles... You get fooled less and less as time goes on, but man, does it feel good when you get fooled. And you definitely, you got me good. So. <laughs> um, also, uh, Jacob also has another favorite of yours, uh, Solid and Stretch. He, he digs on Solid and Stretch, which is a fun thing with the, the Sharpie, right? The Sharpie marker in the cap. That is that is one of those things that I brought that out with, uh, that was Jonathan Farr. So Jonathan, from when we used to work together on World Magic Shop, mm -hmm. he had the idea for the cap and I had the idea for the stretch and we kind of put that out and I didn't think anybody was going to like that 
but I get messages all the time, people saying, I use that all the time. I use uh, solid and stretch. It's a really great, fun bit of magic. But it di when I do it at lectures, people say, I've never heard of that. I don't know if the trailer passed people by. Hmm. Maybe the trailer's not good enough in hindsight, and it kind of went under the radar or at a busy time before a convention or something. But whenever I do it in lectures, it's people see it and people love it. And the people that use it love it. Cause the fun you can have with your spectators really is great because they can't put the cap back on and then you stretch the cap of the Sharpie, then you can drop an eight ball out of it. And then when you put the cap back on the Sharpie, it, it's got a the normal Sharpie and then the really long cap on there. And you can use that as an, in a wand then like I do in the chop glass routine which is another product available from Murphy's Magic Dealers. <laughs> well, I think it goes without being said here that Pi Revelations gets the Luke Dancy Worker of the Week. Worker of the Week. Oh. <laughs> I had to throw back I've to never had a, I've never had a Worker of the Week, Luke. I have never had a Worker of the Week. Well, and when it, comes, when it comes from the Oprah of Magic, <laughs> that means so much. <laughs> Oh, man. By the way, this is what you need to call Luke Dancy now, everybody. He is the Oprah of magic. No, no, no. <laughs> he likes to he he likes to pretend that he doesn't like it, but deep down he loves it. No, I don't. My fiance coined this, and now it is everywhere. Oh, thank you, David Penn. <laughs> He's just the Oprah of magic. No, That's no. what everybody's saying. <laughs> I messaged Greg today and said, do you want to join this online chat with the Oprah of magic? Straight away, he knew exactly who I meant. <laughs> you guys That's are correct. terrible. Yeah. Terrible, I tell you. <laughs> um, I did want to ask something real quick because I was making a, a jab at the uh, the review show. What, what is, what's going on with the review show, David? Because I know that the times are weird and you can't be together with the boys. And um, do you have any idea when they might get back to a weekly thing? Because I know you miss it too. You have to. Like you've done it for so long. So, now. so we uh, right. So the Wizard Magic Review, as it's called now, uh, for me, Luke is about spending time with my friends in magic yeah. and talking about the latest magic releases. People don't realize when we film the Wizard Magic Review, me, Sean, and Wayne, we're friends. We're friends of like nearly t twenty years. And for us, we live in different areas. You know, Wayne's uh, quite a drive away. That is our time when we get together as friends and we'll we'll meet up, we'll go out for breakfast, we'll look at the magic. We, we might even go to the cinema on the same day. We'll go out for meals. And at some point we will film the Wizard Magic Review. And this is the time for me that I spend time with my friends and I talk about the latest magic. But there's so much more for me as an experience of what actually goes on on screen. And that is what I'm missing so badly. I can talk to Wayne every day. You know, I talk to Sean every day. But seeing these guys in person, that camaraderie that we've got, I've always thought that's the thing that's special about our show, sure. that we've got this kind of like banter between us. And we, we, it's so hard keeping that thing under 30 minutes as we try to because we're having so much fun talking about magic. And these are genuine opinions from professionals. I like to think that we are trusted in the magic community. Yeah. We don't sell any of the products that we review and give a mark to. There's no bias there. Uh, even if it's something that's a take on an idea that I've brought out. So. Coin, Coinvex is a coin bender of mine, but I will review something like uh, the Ox Bender or many, many's uh, bender, which looks like a Sharpie cap, which bends forks. And I reviewed that and I gave that such a great review, even though I had a competing product. And I think that's really important to always have that trust of your viewers. And now many's version to bend the fork tines, that is what I use now i don't actually use my other version and i think it's important as a reviewer that you're trusted by your viewers to be able to do that but what's happening is we are waiting so desperately like everybody in the magic community to get back to normal and meet up with our magical friends at conventions and talk about magic and that's what the wizard magic review is for me 
And I say something at the end of the, this week's show, and I, I did get a little bit emotional when I was filming it because I'm just so sad that we've lost so much in the magic community, but we're nearly out of it. Yeah. We are nearly out of it and we're nearly back to normal. And there will be nothing more normal for me than getting back to our bi-weekly wizard magic review shows and talking about the latest magic. But until that day comes, crikey, I, I don't like it on Zoom. I'm kind of killing time, to be honest with you. Mm. Okay. Well, we're all waiting patiently, you know, for not only for your show to come back, but obviously for um, the world to start to get back to normal as much as it can, as quick as it can. So, yeah. Uh, and that is one good thing about technology. We have a chance to connect like this. If we can't be in the same room, we can't be in the same place, at least we can do this, chat about magic, get the details for you guys out there watching today. And we're going to wrap this up by reminding you one more time that this is officially out now, the Pi Revelations book. It is there. I know the boys have got them. There they are. And this is available from your favorite magic shops <laughs> right now. And as David mentioned before, they start shipping out on Friday. So if you get your order in today, they'll be getting to you early next week, if not this weekend, some places, you never know. So uh, very cool stuff. And as always, if you have any other questions along the way, you can always drop them in the comments. We keep an eye on those. So if there's something else you want to know about, we'll be happy to go in there and answer those for you too. But for now, from me, from David Penn, and the man, Mr. Greg Rustami, we are going to get out of here. Thanks for the time, boys. Much Every, Everyone's, sorry, Luke, everyone's no? asking where their car is. Oh, they think it's like being in the audience. And you get a car. And they you need a car. <laughs> Everybody wants a car. Can you can you give some hearts if you would like Murphy's Magic to give away a car? Well, Luke has got this power. Luke is the Oprah of magic, everybody. If you would like a car from Murphy's Magic, show some love to this feed. <laughs> You're relentless, dude. This, um, this guy, Luke, Luke is the Oprah of magic, but, you know, his boss, he's retired. He's a multimillionaire tennis coach. He's living the life now. He can afford to give everybody a car, <laughs> right, Luke? Well, I think the best I can do is is not a car, but cards. I can give you a card, and you get a card, and you get a card, and you get a card. <laughs> That's the best I can do for you. That's about it for now. Oh, my God. Well, Frankie wants his card. Yeah, going. everyone wants their card. It's not going away, Luke. It's not going away. <laughs> it's only getting started. I, I get it. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thank you guys again, and uh, pick up your favorites. Uh, pick this up from your favorite magic shop one more time. And Frankie says he wants his car, but he wants a Tesla, please. Oh, my God. Tesla. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. All right. So for me, David Penn, Greg Ostami, again, the Oprah of magic. We are out of here. Catch you guys next time. <laughs> See ya. Thanks, guys.